Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to lesson number 10 of our databases and SQL video tutorial series. This lesson is going to be about relationships. So here's what you're going to learn today. In this lesson, you're going to learn about what a database relationship actually is, what a relationship actually looks like, and uh, how something called a foreign key is used to establish relationships, as well as why relationships are so you know, bloody important in terms of modern databases. So they are very, they're like key to the design aspect of uh, of a good, you know, well-designed database. You need to have relationships. That's what it's all about. So let's start with uh, obviously relational databases. Relational databases are the modern databases that we use these days. And, um, and there's a reason why they're called relational. There's a reason why that word exists in modern databases. And that's because database tables are meant to have relationships with each other. So obviously, I've said this word so many times, what the heck do I mean by a relationship? Well, for example, table B, so let's say we have two tables. Table B contains data that pertains to table A and holds a pointer back to table A. Okay, the pointer that we use to establish a relationship is known as a foreign key. Now, when I say pointer, if you're coming from a programming background, you might think some sort of like an object pointer or a memory pointer reference, something like that. It's actually a lot simpler than that. All it is is just, like I said, the, there's a foreign key. So it's a key that holds uh, a value inside of a table that will point back to the other table, the parent table. Okay, but don't worry about that if you don't fully understand what I'm talking about just yet, because obviously we're going to dive into some examples. So let's talk a little bit more about foreign keys. <clears throat> foreign keys are what we use to establish, like I said, the link between the two tables. This link is known as the relationship between the two tables. Okay, a foreign key works like this. So let's say we have, like I said, two tables, table A and table B. Table A has a primary key column. So I think the example that we can, that we're going to be looking at is the uh, users table, right? Now, table that could be table A. And obviously in table A, which is the users table, we have a primary key column that we have created, which is the user ID primary key. Okay, then we have table B. And table B has a column, a special column, that holds table A's primary key. Okay, that's called a foreign key. And that is the link between the two tables. So the column in table B that holds the primary key, like I said, is known as the foreign key. Very important to emphasize that point. Um... So you see it's called a foreign key because it's a key that doesn't belong to the table B. I suppose what you can say here is that it belongs to table B in such a way that it's it just belongs there to establish the relationship, but that's as far as it goes in terms of its usefulness. Okay, because when you look at table B in terms of what is in that table, it's going to be all the stuff relevant to whatever it is that we're storing in the table, and the key that point the foreign key that points to back to table A. Like I said, the only reason why it's there is to establish a relationship. Okay, so like I said, let's let, let's use an actual um, real world example here. So like I hinted at, the real world example that we're looking at is the relationship between a user and a user's profile. Okay, so a profile, like you can think of it like on, um, uh, well, on Facebook, I always use that example. You have a profile page on Facebook where you can, you know, it houses all the information about yourself. Uh, for this one, for this table that I've sort of uh, sketched up here, um, it stores your name and your birth date. Okay, so that's the profile, that's the extent of the profile that I'm storing in this particular database schema. Okay, so you see the two tables are linked to together by a user ID. So in the users table, we have the user ID. So you're very familiar with this table. But then we have a user ID inside of the profile table. Okay? And there's a reason why we, well, it's very, it's a good reason why we named it user ID. We named it as such because it points back to the users table. <clears throat> okay? Now I should note that it's not absolutely mandatory for you to, to match the name of this uh, f uh, field or column back to the same name of the uh, parent column. Okay, but I'm just doing that uh, in terms of, uh, you know, being uh, sticking to convention. Okay, that's the convention uh, so that the people um, looking at this will understand that, that that's where the link exists. Okay, if I had been really, really um, uh, fussy with my um, with following standards and whatnot, I probably would have said users ID. So I would have put the S in user so that it, they know it relates to the user's table. Um, but in this case, it's fairly self-explanatory that I do mean for it to point back to the user's table. Okay, so 
like I said, two tables linked, linked together by the user ID. The user ID is the primary key of the user's table, so this is where it's the primary key. But the user ID over here is now called the foreign key because it's in the profile table. And like I said, it doesn't belong to the profile table because um, the profile table holds things like the profile ID, the name, and the birth date, which doesn't really have anything to do with a user ID. And that's the reason why we call it the foreign key. But like I said, very important to establish the relationship between the two tables. It's also important to note that you can have more than one relationship um, for this pointing back to the same table. So here's how I break it down again. Let's say that I also want to track addresses for the users. Okay, so I'm breaking up, I'm separating my concerns here, separation of concerns between the sort of domain models that I'm breaking up here. So we have our users uh, domain model here. We have our profile domain as well as the address domain. But what you can see is the address holds a pointer in the form of a user ID foreign key that points back to the primary key ID of the users table. All right. So it's very important to note that you can have more than one relationship that goes back to the same table. And really, if I wanted to, I could branch off here and do another relationship from address that can point to something else, like maybe a mailing address or a billing address. You know, who knows? Wherever, however you want to design it is completely up to you. So you might be asking yourself, well, why have relationships in the first place? Okay, why do we have to break this data down into a bunch of tables? Because if I go back, let me go back one slide, why don't we just take all the profile information and all the address information and just cram it into the users table? Because it's related, right? So it might, why don't we just put it all in one table? Wouldn't that be easier? Well, you know, it, it would be easier. Yes, actually, that would be very easy. But it also causes something called redundancy. And it also brings up uh, issues in terms of anomalies. Okay, so what is data redundancy, you might ask? Well, data redundancy is when you have data that repeats itself unnecessarily. So having data that repeats itself over and over again is a big waste of space and having re repeating data in a table can usually and will usually lead to anomalies, which is a bad thing. So you don't exactly, obviously you don't know what a data redundancy is if you've never seen it before. Um, I assure you it's not very difficult to understand. Um, data redundancy, like I said, it's just about you, when you see any data that's repeating itself, okay? Um, that is what essentially it boils down to. I will be able to show you some examples of data redundancy uh, in some later lessons. But first, before we get into that, I want to talk about, uh, well, at least that, I want to talk about the fact that we're going to be talking about anomalies and redundancy in the next lesson. Because in the last, next lesson, we're going to be learning something called uh, normalization, which I will warn you when I was in university, normalization was, let's just say, the bane of my existence. I didn't really get normalization. And again, I bring up the fact that I didn't have the greatest teacher back then. And um, although I probably could have been a better student myself as I was much younger and perhaps I wasn't paying attention as much as I should have. Uh, but in any case, I, uh, I will do a much better job, I promise, at teaching you what normalization is and how you can use it to make your life much, much easier. So that'll be in the next lesson. But first, before we go into the next lesson, I want to talk about what you just learned. Because in this lesson, uh, you learned about um, the fact that a relationship is created between two tables using a foreign key. Very, very important to understand the term foreign key versus primary key. Okay, two very different things, foreign key, pr uh, primary key. Um, and we use this foreign key to establish a relationship between the two tables. A foreign key is just a primary key that belongs to another table. But don't get confused with that statement, okay? Primary key and foreign key, like I said, very different things. It's just the fact that um, they, they provide different functionalities depending on which table they're in. So if you have a foreign key, that's the relationship. If it's a primary key, that's providing the uniqueness for that table, right? Because you need to have every single row be unique in every single database table. That is the foundation of databases. If that broke down, then, well, you're actually going to learn a lot about that in the next lessons when we talk about normalization and data anomalies. And you can also actually have multiple tables that use the same foreign key. And this is actually quite common. Like I said, you had the users table that had two different relationships pointing off to the profile table as well as the uh, address table. So that's two different tables pointing back using the same foreign key into the same initial parent table. 
Okay, And we use relationships purposefully. We use them on purpose to maintain normalization in our databases. Like I said, there's that word normalization. We're going to be getting into that right now into the next lesson. So pay attention. Get your notebooks out. This is some important stuff that's about to come your way. All right, cool. See you there.